Before we begin editing effects, let's recall snapshot four. And I want to drop some of our effects onto our custom direct select to make them easy to get to. So we're going to say effect one through four plus 901. Then I'm going to double tap the empty custom direct select below my guitar focus palette. I'll go ahead and shift clear to clear up my command line and close my CIA back down. And let's re-record this as snapshot four. So record snapshot four, enter, enter. All right, now that I've got those there for easy access, we are going to go to queue out, enter. And the first effect we're going to look at editing is a step-based effect. So we are going to grab our effect one group in our group direct select display and touch our downstage chase effect. And remember, this is the step-based effect that we wrote previously. To open our effect status display, I can clear my command line and press effect once, and that will populate in our CIA. So what this display will show us is the effects currently running, the channels that are running on that effect in their selected order. So you'll see here that the channels are numerically out of order, but this is the order in which they are recorded in the group. It tells us our source. In this case, it's manual, but it could be a queue or a submaster. And over on the right, you'll see our rate and size, which default to 100. Previously, when editing effects, we were editing them at a global level, meaning we were changing the whole effect. This screen allows us to edit them on a queue by queue basis. Along the bottom of our effect status display, we see the effect number again, followed by attributes, duration, entry, exit, grouping, and trail. These are all attributes that we can change on a queue by queue basis, which will not impact the overall effect. So from here, I'm going to use my rate soft key and I'm gonna change that to 300, which will speed that up. All effects, rates, and sizes default to 100, and we can go anywhere from zero to 2,000 on either of those numbers. We can change it to 50, and slow it down. And to stop this effect, I'm going to use our stop effect macro right there. Next, let's look at an absolute effect that we created earlier. So we're going to grab that same group of fixtures, our effect one group, and run effect number four, intensity fade. Let's open up our effect editor for just a second. I'm gonna double tap effect. And we'll pop open our CIA. So as a reminder, this effect is two actions. The first action being full and the second action being background. So on stage, we're seeing it go between zero and full because zero is the background state. Back in live, if I select that group again, and I put it at 25%, the background state of that effect will now be 25 instead of zero. So these lights won't actually go all the way out here. If I were to edit that background state within the effect, we'll say effect effect again, pop that back open. If I select action two, level at 50, enter. Now you'll notice on stage, those lights are going between 50 and 100 instead of 25 and 100. So this is an example of editing the global effect in the editor versus changing something on a queue by queue basis. Be careful about globally editing effects after you've queued them into your show as those changes will populate anywhere that you've used those effects. Let's go back out into live, close our CIA. Our third and final type of effect is a relative effect. So let's grab our front of house movers and I'm gonna turn those on with our 100% direct select and put those on the singer. And now I'm going to run our circle effect. So these lights are making a circle relative to their location on stage. If I pan these lights stage right, they're still going to keep making a circle, but relative to that pan and tilt location stage right. I can move them stage left, or I can come back to center. I can also open the effect status display in a tab. So I'm going to go to a new workspace and open my ESD. 
So we can see here that we have two effects currently running and what channel selections are in those effects. Effect 901 is already selected, so I'm going to say effect size 50, enter. It's going to make that circle 50% as large as it was. I can also use my encoders to make these changes. So my second encoder is size, so I can roll that up. Notice that in addition to the channels and the effect itself, the size is also red, meaning that that is manual data that we could store into a queue. Even though we built all of this from a go to queue out state, we're gonna go ahead and update all of our manual data here into queue 110. So I'm going to clear my command line and say update 110, enter. And now I'll go ahead and go to queue 110. The larger circle size of this effect is stored here in this queue. We have not changed the base effect.